That's who you voted for in that district. Donald Trump, who reduces all safety. He yeah. did. Do in they those showed days. up at Do McDonald's and those voters yeah, saw something on the ground that yeah. probably it, resonates in a way that the they thing. need. Yeah, but they need to look past the photo of ops, these people, and Wait. say, who's doing the job here? Joy Behar and the ladies of The View decided that shaming the voting behavior of the residents of East Palestine was really the way to go when covering the story. Now, of course, there was a tragic train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. And now there are big concerns about whether or not the water is safe to consume in the town. Now, of course, Donald Trump deregulated the rail industry and so Joy Behar is trying to draw attention to that and then basically blame the people of East Palestine for voting for him. But I want to show you her comments with more context. So let's take a look at that and then I want to hear your thoughts, Cenk. I do think this was an unforced error by President Biden. It was 20 days before we had Secretary Buttigieg go down, 10 days before he put out a statement acknowledging it. Yeah. This is Trump country. He won by 40 points. He he is a president for all Americans. I believe that, but he needs to show do that they, he is. But it was time for him to be. I don't know why they would ever vote for him because for somebody who, who, by the way, he placed someone with deep ties to the chemical industry in charge of the EPA's chemical safety office. That's who you voted for in that district. Donald Trump, who reduces all safety, he yeah. did. Do in they those showed days. up at do McDonald's and those voters yeah, saw something on the ground that yeah. probably it, resonates in a way that the they thing. need. Yeah, but they, they need to look past the photo of ops, these people, and Wait. say who's doing the job here. Forget about the photo ops. Showing, showing up is a big showing up. I think, I think this is Donald Trump's fault. Well, it, I mean, that's the called I think it's his fault, and then he shows up. So look, I want to note that while Trump absolutely did deregulate the rail industry, the deregulation that he did would not have impacted this train derailment. So even if he didn't reverse what Obama did, with the exception of the like the different breaks, that absolutely should have gone through. But my point is, look, you can talk about the deregulation. We've been talking about the deregulation on this show. But making the assumption that the people of East Palestine, Ohio have all the information about deregulation in this current corporate media mess is naive to at best, incredibly ignorant at worst, right? Because they don't have perfect information. You think, does the corporate media talk about the government deregulating things? Is that something they cover regularly? Or on The View, uh, look, that was an awful conversation. Uh, there was only one fact given, and funny enough, it was given by Joy Behar uh, before she made this so-called offensive comment. Uh, was it offensive? Well, it was literally true that they did vote for Trump. Trump did deregulate, but it leaves out giant facts. Yes, and so that context is really important. Now, what Joy Behar probably doesn't even know because she consumes mainstream media, and she probably hasn't read the great reporting that the Lever has done on this. Uh, and has been doing from day one on this, mm -hmm. which is that the Obama administration had one small rule, the one that Anna mentioned, okay? There was a series of other regulations about modernizing their brakes, uh, how you carry chemical hazards, how many staff you have, how many inspections you have, so you can spot problems like the axle issue that this train had, right? All those things, as usual with all Democrats, Obama did a light push. And golly gee, the Republicans and other Democrats blocked them, and I, there was nothing he could do. So did Joy Behar criticize Obama for not trying hard on that? Did they criticize other Democrats for joining Republicans and blocking those regulations? Then Trump made it worse. He took away the one regulation that existed right. and said he wouldn't do any regulation of the industry. So he definitely made it worse. And then Biden came in and didn't even go back to the light nudging that Obama had. He hasn't proposed anything. Nothing. Okay, so let me let me also address that. Isn't it fascinating that Trump comes into office and there's no debate. He unilaterally reverses what little regulation took place under the Obama administration. Unilaterally. He didn't make a plea to the Republican controlled Congress to deregulate. He just did it on his own through the executive branch. But when it comes to the Biden administration and the Department of Transportation under Pete Buttigieg's leadership, uh, you know, I, I call on Congress because he knows Congress is where legislation goes to die. He knows that. 
He knows that Congress isn't gonna regulate <laughs> the rail industry, but he has the power to do it. He just chose not to. And then after all of this controversy, he decides to put out some incredibly weak sauce regulation proposals that rail workers responded to and said, this is, this is not enough. There are loopholes here, particularly loopholes that allow for the rail industry to uh, operate the trains with one person crews. Yeah. And by the way, uh, they just had a near strike in this same industry. And who did Biden side with? He sided with the companies and not the workers. He told the workers, I'm not even gonna allow you to negotiate with them. I'm gonna enforce a contract on you because he has that power in the executive branch. So funny enough, when he needed the power to crush the workers in the railroad industry, he found it. When he needs the power to regulate the railroad industry, oh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? I, oh, oh, golly gee, I just can't seem to find it. And so, guys, this happens all the time on almost every issue. Republicans come in and get stuff done for the rich. They deregulate industries and they pass tax cuts, right? Democrats come in and can't get anything done. And they go, oh, oh I bungled it away again. Oh, golly gee. One of the few things I got passed was a semiconductor bill. Which gives all of the money to the semiconductor industry. Infrastructure bill, which gives all of the money to infrastructure companies. <laughs> Golly gee, how did that happen? And the media can't tell. I mean, they complain about photo ops and stuff. You guys are the photo op. None of you discussed other than Joy Behar on that one little part, incomplete. Talked about the actual problem. Exactly. The regulations that aren't there under Republican and Democratic rule. But you guys are busy distracting the voters. Oh, blame Trump, blame Buttigieg, blame Trump, blame Buttigieg. Get into two different sides and have a fight that's over nonsense and photo ops, but don't ever actually talk about the regulations because corporations are not interested in that. By the way, the one other thing I'll just say, and look, I say this as someone who has probably one of the cringiest videos of myself out there from the 2016 presidential election where I said horrible things about women who voted for Trump, okay? And I say this because I let my feelings, my emotions target voters. When in reality, there's all sorts of institutional issues here, especially when it comes to our media, something we talk about a lot. So like the optics of pointing your finger at ordinary people, which is what Joy Behar did in that video, is not good if you're trying to make a persuasive case to support, broadly speaking, the left, okay? So with that said, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Cenk. But Anna, so you, we take a slightly different stance on this. So Anna says, don't blame the voters on the right wing or the left wing. I say blame them both, okay? And so, and I don't, is it mainly their fault? Of course not, it's the leaders that are deceiving them. And it's the media that is maybe the most at fault for covering up all those crimes, right? But yeah, the Republican voters vote for Trump who deregulates and gives uh, gave a $2 trillion tax cut to the rich. So what are you guys doing? You're voting for Conman. On the other hand, hold on. On the other hand, the part you're never, ever, ever going to see in mainstream media is Democratic voters are like, oh, Buttigieg and Biden aren't regulating. Oh, but the meanies at Fox News are attacking him. That's what we protect Buttigieg. We protect Biden, right? Guys, do you know what's going on? If you watch mainstream media, you think you know what's going on? You don't know. The whole enterprise is built to maintain corporate rule. They're not giving you the actual news. You saw it in that segment, but you can see it in every segment. So yes, we all need to wake up together and realize we're not each other's enemies. The guys in power are trying to get us to fight. That's right. So they can rob the place. Okay, but okay, so my point though is, Jank. You know, this whole idea that, oh, Republican voters, they're voting against their best interests because they vote for Republicans. Okay, yeah, but I mean, we've been talking about the deregulation issue when it, when it comes to the rail industry. What's the difference between Democrats and Republicans, really? What's the difference? No, I know there is the no difference. No, no, they, in fact, not only is there no difference, guys, they're playing good cop, bad cop on you. And, and so is the media. Mainstream media goes, oh, we're the good cops, and right wing media is more you know brash and attacks people for their identity, etc. So they're the bad cops, right? But at the end of the day, they're on the same team. On any, you, here, watch, I'll, we'll tell you guys, we tell you all the time, if you're new to this, once we tell you, you can't unsee it. You'll see that on culture war issues, there's not nonstop fake fights, right? And real fights. But when it comes to economic issues, they always circle the wagons. Everybody in media and everybody in politics. Somehow, no one can find a way to regulate, everybody can find ways to deregulate. 
Somehow everybody's talking about Mr. Potato Head and m and uh, people, not people, cartoon characters. But they're not to talking about regulating the railroad workers. They're all against lifting student debt. They're all against uh, universal health care that every other country has. They're all against higher wages. Oh, it's causing inflation. Oh, well, look at that, MSNBC, Fox News, and CNN agree all of a sudden. It's all a game and it's being played against all of us. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.